someone from the outside, you know, everything makes sense in Islam, you know, but certain people are trying to confuse people to get them off that path of reaching, of submitting to the Creator, so they throw out certain allegations against Islam, a lot of false things, statements, and one of them is that, I mean, look, your God is just creating this paradise, and all you guys are just seeking pleasure, it's all about pleasure, and have you heard this argument? Mm -hmm. yeah, sure. What, how, what do you say about this? Well, I say lots of things about that. So, <laughs> that's the first thing I say about that. So there's pleasure. You run after pleasure here, and you're telling me I'm a criminal because I'm running uh, after pleasure that God gives me for earning good deeds. And pleasure is something Allah put inside the human. Do you deny there's a, such a thing as a pursuit of pleasure? Nobody does. Everybody's looking for pleasure in this world. God is just telling me, put the brakes on, act ethically, and act decently in this world, and I will, all the things you held yourself back from, I will let you have. I say, why not? I used to, they used to argue that Islam is, you know, you might have a younger audience, but Islam offers such sexual rewards in paradise. That's one of the, yes. you know, and it's, you know, these beautiful women and this and that. I say to you, you have a young man who goes to college in this country, who goes to campus in the middle of the summer. He sees half-naked women all around him and he guards his eyes. He doesn't make, they make small talk with him, he doesn't make small talk back. He knows, he keeps telling himself, Allah's got better for me, Allah's got better for me, Allah's got better for me. She looks beautiful, but I'm not going to look. I, I can't. I, can't. I'm, I know Allah has better. I know, you know how hard that is for a young man to do? And Allah at the end of the day says, Bravo, you did well, you know what? You, you deserve something. <laughs> Everything you've held yourself back from, here you go. It is not that we get these you know, lustful rewards in paradise. It's actually that you've guarded yourself against the most strongest urge a man can have. How many psychologists talk about how many times a man thinks about sex in a day? You know? I mean, some even count like every 30 seconds or every 40 seconds or something. It's crazy. This was psychologists, I tell you. Psychologists, 30, 40, 60, 2 minutes. Even 2 minutes, that's insane. How much this thought runs in the mind of a person? How much it can? And add to that, we're living in a time where pornographic images, filthy ads, shameless is constantly being bombarded in our face. How much even more? And in the face of all of that, a man guards his chastity, a woman guards herself. Why shouldn't they? Why shouldn't they be given the best reward? The most beautiful spouse ever imaginable. Why shouldn't they be given that? They'll both have whatever their hearts desire. Whatever their hearts man desire. Man and woman. Anything they want, they can have a gender. That's correct. Okay. So and if you, know, if you think, well, what I'm going to want is going to be evil. Evil itself is removed from your heart. Evil so whatever you want will be good anyway. Whatever you want is good in and of itself and you will be so pleased with it. Because when I say good, it doesn't just mean it will be boring. It means it will be good and it will be pleasing to you and good for you. How many things in this world are pleasing to people but they're not good for them? People find pleasure in drugs, don't they? Yes. But true. they die from them too. Mm -hmm. People find pleasure in alcohol, they get sick from it too. They get into car accidents from it too. Pleasure, something pleasurable and something good for you is never the same. Except in Jannah. In Jannah it's going to be good for you and pleasurable for you, both at the same time.